Okay, here we are running our latest version of Plasmac um, second cut. Let's see how we go. So the advantage of Plasmax is that it is totally inbuilt, um, totally controls the dead axis. All you have to do is give it uh, an M3 and uh, a speed M3S1 and you're in business and the whole um, interface looks after itself. So also you would have noticed that the, I'll show the, um, the nut on the, the joiner on the Z axis was moving very, very slowly, so it was much better um, than what I've had before, which was extremely nervous. And the other thing that I've been able to do since I've got this new um, plasma machine is deal with omic sensing, and um, Plasmac also handles both omic sensing and the um, and um, also the float switch, which we have up here. Uh, I've always had the float switch here. The original, um, the original machine I had just didn't. Oh, hang on, on the wrong side. But the original machine didn't have the, um, um, the ability to do omic sensing. So now um, this thin material has been a problem for me because it distorts when probing with the float switch. And now there's no distortion. And even when I played around with the um, the thing being a couple of um, a bit off the ground and sloppy and, and you know, 20 mil off the surface of the table, it was sensing nicely. So the other thing that we've done now is with with the table, I've upgraded the um, the drag chain here as part of putting on the large torch, and we've got this. Um, uh, Thermal Dynamics A120 plasma cutter. We'll get to a look at in a minute. And um, down here to my um, still to be finished control panel. But um, the other thing that I've done here, you can see that we've got plasma picking up. It's being driven by the 7i76E, which goes from here across to here, and then the Mesa THPad 10 is this small board here which is wired in to, to read the voltage and the other thing that I've done over on the on this page here is do some and I've still got to tidy up the wires yet but that, that won't take long I've still got a, got a couple of um, relays here and a, an LED indicator as well just for troubleshooting so basically what happens here one of these relays is enabled when we're only when we're probing and the second one sends a signal back for the um, omic sensing. So we've got a diode in there to protect the circuit, and so far that's been working well. And um, this is a noisy proof, but here's our Thermal Dynamics A120. Um, I might just turn that off and uh, be a little bit quieter. So. This machine I've successfully cut 16 mil with. Um, we're running the, um, the air down to it, three phase power. And up above us here, if I just step back without tripping, I've got the power supply, uh, um, air supply, plus I found it was essential that I had a, um, a um, refrigerated dryer. And the other thing that I've done is um, build in a pre cooler. Um, which has air sucked through it by the um, by the pulley on the on the um, compressor on the compressor itself. This is a single phase um, compressor. It's just big enough for this machine, and um, it was something that I already had at home before I come up here. Where I had three phase power, so that um, aside from our stack lights here. Um, 
and on top of that's a little antenna. Um, the stack light has some uh, green lights. There's a video on I've done a long time ago showing how these works, but um, if you hit e-stop, you'll get a red light. Orange says it's ready. Um, yeah, a bit hard to see, but that's the orange light coming on. We're not enabled. Um, and um, when we're now enabled, uh, orange light comes on. And if we run a bit of G code, um, if we go G0 um, to X0, Zero to X zero, you'll see it go green. No, we don't. Not working for me now. But anyway, that is um, three years of effort, which has been just uh, been really brought alive by um, the work of Phil down in Melbourne. Uh, with the Linux CNC plasma configuration.